Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, you guys have seen the show. Probably most of you have seen lots of them in lots of different times and lots of different ways. And as we were starting this show, for some reason, you know, usually the show, I mean, the crew was so meticulous and so precise. And we really checked the equipment all the time, but we were trying to do this show. And as it turns out, one of the cameras that handles the audio was cutting out and wasn't working. So we had to you know, do a whole opening and do it again and then do a test and then come back. And so this is, in essence, the third time that I've started and welcomed you and welcomed you on behalf of the crew. And yet, you know, and. So I've, you know, this is the third time or fourth time today, and this is the 259th show of bridging. So there have been 259 openings before that, and I guess a few where we did one or two. So there have been, you know, many, many hundreds of bridging openings, and they're all the same. You know, love is the question and love is the answer. And how do we get to that? How do we get to the root? How do we get to know that? How do we recognize as brothers and sisters, as a species on this planet, that love is the question and love is the answer? How? How do we get there? How do we recognize that until that is questioned and that is answered? and the heart is healed and the root is healed, we're never gonna fix what's, what ails us. We're never gonna fix the broken heart of separation. We're never gonna fix the broken heart of division, the broken heart of the pain that we feel when we don't feel one with love, one with God, one with the Creator, one with each other. The pain of that is, is extraordinary, and that leads us to all the craziness on this planet. There is one issue on this planet, feeling separate from love, feeling separate from the Creator, feeling separate from God, feeling separate from each other, and feeling separate from ourselves. And once we feel that, really, all hell breaks loose, individually and collectively, because it's such annoying pain and such a because we know it's fixable. We know that we are here for a reason. We know that the human species is one with God. That the, the, this expression and the experience Jesus had when he said, the Father and I are one, is ours. That there is one energy, and we are it. And everyone is it. And we talk a lot about the show that, that we want this show and we want every show. Whatever the words are, whatever the, the guest is, whatever the, the music, whatever the art, that it's a show that vibrates, not necessarily talks about, but vibrates the infinite and vibrates the inclusion. Because we are infinite and we cannot be excluded. And yet in the human form we feel that way sometimes and from there all the craziness happens so for us at bridging you know thank you and we welcome you we welcome you to come again to experience the infinite to experience the inclusion to experience the unconditional love to experience the oneness and tonight's guest again dedicates his life to that. He travels the world and dedicates his life to the evolution of con consciousness. Evan Rados is a spiritual teacher. He's a healer. He's a world-renowned artist. He's the author of many, many books, and he's got an extraordinary new book out, Health is All About Consciousness. And he had gifts and spiritual experiences from an early age. And now he feels it's his time to share those gifts with the world, to bring those vibrations of love and oneness out. And that's what he does, and that's why he came in from Canada, to share those experiences with us here at Bridging. 
And as most of you know, we're also in the middle, it came as a dream, it came as a vision, to put out an international healing art project, to reach out to the world and use the, the gift of this bridging show and all the cable stations bridging is shown at and all the YouTube and Vimeo and Google Video and all the other video sites that show hundreds and hundreds of bridging shows to millions and millions of people to reach out and say, anybody who wants to create a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven Earth, we'll put it on the show, we'll have a beautiful, beautiful uh, healing art uh, website, heaventoearthart.com. And it's, we've received pieces from all over the world. And one of the pieces uh, even did, it's uh, vulnerability is receptivity, it's a sacred geometry uh, meditation yantra, and you'll see that uh, when uh, when even comes on the set. And we have another beautiful piece that came in from, from uh, Europe, Sophia Condardi, uh, the gold and silver violet flame. It is so big and so beautiful and so powerful that we can only really show part of it. So if you want to, go to heaventoearthart.com, look up Sophia Condardi, look at her page, go to her website, experience the beauty of her. And we also have two beautiful music videos by uh, Sophia, not the same Sophia artist, but Sophia, the sound healer. And she and David, and a former guest of Bridging, and uh, he produces uh, many, many attainment, beautiful music art videos. They put together a beautiful music video where two of her songs are on there. So we have a real opportunity tonight to really experience our own infinity, our own infinite quality, our own inclusiveness, our own unconditional love, and just feel it and share it and feel it and share it and let's multiply it and let's enliven the energy and heal the heart of this planet. So join me in a short meditation, then we'll have music and art and even with us. And again, it's an opportunity. So join me. Thank you. So uh, the first video again, Sophia Sound Healer, uh, produced by David. It's called Heart of the Mother. It is extraordinarily beautiful. It was written by Michael Stillwater, who was another former guest on Bridging. Uh, and there's some of the music and the, the voices you'll hear, the San Jose Cor Choral Project, directed by uh, uh, Daniel Hughes. And it's from the CD, Spirit Healing Center, uh, Sequoia Records. Uh, spirit Healing Chance from Sequoia Records. So enjoy. Thank you.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So thank you, Sophia. Thank you, David. Heart of the Mother, beautiful. And we're going to see another song that they put together a little later, Keepers of the Garden. And the incredible piece of art, this beautiful manifestation, is vulnerability, is receptivity. It's a mixed media art piece by our beloved guest. Why don't you talk a little bit about how that came to be and what a yantra is and all that? Um, when I want to create a yantra, then I'm just going to meditation. And when you start meditating, you close your eyes and you see nothing. I mean, thoughts are passing by and the emotions are surfacing, sensations in the body. You don't pay attention to those. You are more in the moment looking at that darkness, emptiness. And with intent, not intention, because intention means to be in the state of tension. That's the mind. So beyond that, there is a pure intent to understand something, to create something, to designate, to expand. So my intent was to understand what is vulnerability. So I will close my eyes and image will come. And the meaning of that image will be in my knowingness. I don't know how I know, but I know that I know. For me, it's enough. It's called self-evident truth. I try to share with others, try to write about it, but to really come to the essence of that meaning coming from that nothingness is really difficult. So I tried my best. So I just got it. Vulnerability is receptivity. Vulnerability to what? To the moment, to you. When you're vulnerable, you are open. When you're vulnerable, you are receptive. You are attracting the same vibration. You are vulnerable to the truth. You are vulnerable to love. You are vulnerable to God. Vulnerability is very, very, uh, it's like spiritual, highest spiritual attribute. And people are scared of being vulnerable. That's why they, you know, dump themselves with all kinds of other things like thoughts, security, money, possession, reputation, just just to avoid that being vulnerable. People don't love each other. They don't love themselves because they are scared of their vulnerability. And for me, it was just jumping into the unknown and understanding. So that's how this piece came about. And what made you, when you were gonna do this, this piece and it was you know, based on the theme, bridging heaven and earth, how did vulnerability come to be the word that the intent came to be from? You are dedicated to oneness. Aren't you? You're dedicated to love. Right. And love is vulnerability. Love is vulnerable. So in other words, you made that definitional... I didn't reason. make it. It just came to me. It came to you. It just came to me. Right. Whether I'm right or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I know that I enjoy doing it. Enjoy. As you can see, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. very joyful right. piece of art. So this little piece is meant to help people meditate and go beyond consensus reality. Go beyond uh, structure of the mind to, to really touch the base of and the fabric of existence, which is nothingness. So when you are in that nothingness, there is nothing to see, nothing to experience, nothing to perceive, nothing to, nothing to uh, feel, but there is some, something inside. It's awareness that you are. And that's what this piece is about, that you are as you are. And that's the beautiful gift by creator. Oh, actually, there is no creator and there is no creation. There is a process of creativity. So when you look at this piece, then there is a process of creativity. It's consciousness expanding itself, recognizing itself and expanding in infinite forms and infinite ways, reaching others, reaching the furthest corner of the universe. And how do, how do you, and so you get this image and, and then it's self-evident that that's it, that's that that's it. finished and that, and how do you get it from internal to this piece of? Oh, this is another, this is another level, which I recall what I experienced. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm not the experience. Mm -hmm. I am the one who was experiencing mm -hmm. and I can recall the experience and be the experience again. 
if I try to do the same experience through that experiencer, the piece will be different because there are infinite possibilities. But I'm happy with the one mm -hmm. <laughs> because it just, it's a stump of that experience saying, if you want to understand vulnerability, this is it. Try to meditate, see the dot. And if you look at the dot as a central point, because that dot is a seed, is a sperm, is a point, is a bindu. It's you, it's consciousness. When you're looking at a dot, you are reflecting yourself. You're recognizing yourself. Other forms and other, other pieces of peripheral vision of your eyes are not your concern. Your mind will record that. You don't pay attention to it. You pay attention to the dot. And after a while, 50 minutes, 20 minutes, looking at the dot, you close your eyes. That image will be embedded in your mind. And you look at that embedded image. Forms are difficult to, adjust, to digest by the mind. So the mind is much easy with the, with the colors because they are linked with emotions. Emotions might surface, but emotions are not you and they are not yours. They belong to social conditioning. Social conditioning, nothing else. Embedded, imprinted by others. Emotions are interpretation or uh, replacement be, because there is no one feeling. Feeling of what? Feeling of being who you are. Feeling of love. Love is not sentimental. Love is total acceptance of who you are. So when you look at those, that image embedded in your mind, forms are very easily disappearing. But the colors are melting and moving and transforming into each other. And then just blackness. And that blackness, joy comes uncaused joy comes as you, because you become joyful, recognizing your own existence, because you exist infinitely, as you are. That's the infinite fact. So you can get it from that image. I mean, even to say that you can get it, no, you will experience the experiencer, just looking at a dot. And so, I said at the open that as a child, you were having spiritual experiences early on. So, I mean, did you come into these kind of realizations early on or did it, was it a process for you? Uh, if I go back in the memory, memory is okay, <laughs> but the problem is our attachments to the memory. So I'm just drawing my memory right, I understand. and remembering that when I was a kid, let's say four or five, I used to witness people suffering from, my, my friends from the school and my colleagues and my family members suffering from toothache, stomachache, headache. And out of my empathy or compassion, I don't know what was that, I would just come and touch certain parts of the body, not knowing what I was touching, and the person will feel fine. So I reached my... I think seven, I was seven or eight, and helped so many kids around. And in the school, I was bullied by my colleagues. And the teacher would start teasing me and chasing me around and giving me hard homework because I was for them odd. So I came to my grandma and asked for advice. You know, I said, I have a problem because I cannot really find anyone who can be friends with me because of my ability. I don't know what's wrong with that. She said, you're born with that ability, my son. If you're born with that ability, you, have, you can repress that ability or you can channel that ability to different avenues, different areas. What do you want to do? I said, I don't know. I, I don't fancy repressing it because I'm scared that I will never ever discover it again. I might dump somewhere really dark in the corner and spend lives and lives chasing it. That was the thought as a kid. I said, I'm going to channel it. That's a good idea. What are you going to be? I said, I'm going to be an artist. So I became a very famous artist later. I became a famous actor. And the war happened in my country. So I moved to England. And I established myself very quickly there as an artist, exhibiting worldwide, being recognized, being successful. But something was missing there. It's a huge, big, empty gap. 
I was trying to fill with all kinds of recognition that outside success and, and nonsense that I decided that I have to search for the real. And I dive deep into my meditation, to my being, and uh, came out after five years with so many fights, so many ghosts haunting me, devils and, and, and temptations, and it just was nightmare. And I came very clean and clear, just knowing that I am loved, not by God, but by myself. And I just realized that God is God, expressing itself through infinite pieces. And every single individual piece is God itself. And I recognized that in myself. And I was clean from all my emotional wounds, all my worries, all my tensions, all my stresses, all my fears. It was like, whew. And I was invited to, uh, as an artist, I was invited to Cleveland Performance Art Festival to represent Britain. So I was there in Cleveland. And my beloved brother moved to Canada, Vancouver. And I decided, we decided to pay a visit. So we went to Canada. And I fall in love with the place. I said, that's the place I'm gonna live. So 2001, we came there. In 2002, in my meditation, the voice, inner, deep, inner voice saying, is the time now or never? And I knew what was that, to come out of and share, to educate myself, because education means to draw out essential soul, to draw out your, your consciousness, to draw out your, your ability. And I decided I'm not going to hide anymore beyond, beyond outside successes <clears throat> and, and recognition and just to be healer, be vulnerable and be receptive. <laughs> That's the piece about it. So, I start healing, but I never healed anyone. I just help people to heal themselves the same way as I healed myself. So no one can heal you. If I'm able to heal you, I'm able to poison you. I'm able to create a disease in you. Outside is not powerful. We are giving power to outside. Circumstances and situations and other people, other forces. But once you take that power back into your own heart, loving oneself, knowing that you are loved by oneself, then you become infinite and you have enormous power to heal yourself and help others to heal themselves as well. So it's been really miraculous just witnessing people healing themselves from cancer, from multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's diseases, and all kinds of other diseases. It's been joyful. Joyful so, journey. So, I mean, did you have a particular meditation? You talk a lot about meditation, about that being part of your path, going into meditation. What, what particular, did you have a particular form where you taught something? Or did you instinctively know? But you see, for me, early age, I used to practice all kinds of techniques. And at age 18, I just, said to myself, I am just bullshitting myself with all kinds of methods and all kinds of techniques because they are leading me to some aspect of my being, to the other aspect. That's fine. That's good journey. But I got the essence of meditation. And the essence of the meditation is to be aware. If that's the essence, why don't I apply that awareness in every act I do, in every things I experience? I can be aware or not. I can be aware of my hands moving. I can be aware of my body trembling. I can be aware of my mind passing by. And I just realized that everything that is passing by, it's not me. So there is no technique to really find yourself. With a technique, you need a motive. You need mot to be motivated. You need a goal. You need a distance. And I didn't want to travel really far and suffer and struggle in order to find myself, knowing that I will never ever find myself. So only way is to access the portal right now through awareness, because awareness is now. Call it infinite consciousness. So 
If that's the meditation technique, so be it. But there's nothing meditational there, because we are the meditation. We all think about and talk about being in meditation. When you are in meditation, you are in, and there is a meditation in you as a two separate things. There is a distance. When, while you are the meditation, there is no distance. You are the one. You are the oneness. You are the wholeness. So, it's just meditation is every day act. Whether I talk, whether I walk, whether I eat, whether I interact with people, I'm always the meditation. So, the meditation is beyond the mind. If you are used by the mind, you are not in meditation, and you are not the meditation. Going beyond the mind, you become the meditation. So you are using the mind in order to recognize oneself in others. So you are me, and I am you. On the circumstances, we are different. Your body is different than mine. Your mind has different structure and different texture and different, different content than my mind. And your emotions, they move left and right differently than my emotions. Maybe they are more female or more male. You know, just like tick-tock, pendulum. On non-existential level, we are different. But on existential level, we are one and the same. When you become aware of who you are, the truth, ultimate truth, and when I become aware of my ultimate truth, is there any difference between your truth and my truth? No, it's the same called life, called existence. So we share the same existence. So you can be aware of it right now, or you will never ever, ever be aware of it. In whatever method you use, you will only scratch on the surface. So the right meditation method, or what I call uh, meditation unmethodist method, is to be right now, present, and be aware of your acts, of your doings of your being. In the human body, it seems like for a lot of people, there's a momentum to not be. There's a past, there's a future. And, and that takes you out of the moment. That takes you out of the now. If you're, if you're thinking, if you're in the past or the future. So how do you recommend to people that they, they be here now, that they stop the world, that they cut off in a way, the, the thoughts of past and future? Future is projection. Past is gone. Future is created because of past. The moment is bypassed. The moment is all that is. It's you. People would rather be in the past and go into the future because they are very scared of unknown. They are scared of being vulnerable, being open. So they are stuffing themselves with known. That's the mind, attaching themselves to the mind, to the thoughts. And the thoughts are not ours. And we are not the mind. The mind means consensus reality. You don't own a single thought. All thoughts are borrowed from other people from other situations, from other experiences, from the books, from the theories, from the teachings. So beyond the mind is infinite space where God is, called the wholeness. So there is a, there is a, a approach to really be in the mind and to be in the now and to be grounded in the now. And that approach is very simple. Whatever is passing by, whatever is coming and going, it's not you. And it's a dream. It does not exist. Everything that is coming is transforming into something else. The people are coming by, situations are coming by, the thought coming by, changing into another thought. People are moving, body is dissolving, the mind is changing, the structure, the content, emotions are fluctuating, moving up and down, left and right. You are not it. Right. Well, you know, maybe what we'll do is talk about the approach. Because I think it's interesting. I mean, because there is, what you're saying is true. But throughout human history, 
to, to come into that moment and stay in that moment and not to get caught up in the past and future has not been an easy experience for the human species. So, you know, maybe in the second section you'll have a chance to help everybody. Okay, so in the second section we'll, we'll do that. And now we're going to see the second video from Sophia, the sound healer, um, and the you know, production by David, uh, Keepers of the Garden, it's written by Sophia and Buddy Comfort, and you know, David and, uh, and uh, Sophia put it together. So enjoy, Keepers of the Garden.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. Keepers of the Garden, Sophie and David, thanks for doing that. We really appreciate them getting it. And we have more of, of that. It's, it's a CD that has a lot of music and a lot of video on it. So we'll show more of Sophia as the year goes on. And the incredible piece you're seeing uh, in between Eva and I is uh, from Sophia Condardi. She's from Paris, France and, and England, the United Kingdom. It's the gold and silver violet frame. It's acrylic on canvas. And again, and actually, as I said it, it earlier, this piece is longer. So go to the website and you'll see Heaven to Earth Art, look up Sophia. We had it because we didn't have the logistics of the camera work, we wouldn't be able to show the whole thing. So go to the website, heaven to earth art .com, and look up Sophia Condardi and you'll see the whole piece. And also, anybody who wants to join us, there's no skill level, there's no deadlines, there's no time frame, there's no paperwork. Anybody who wants to be part of the International Healing Art Project, it's just about intention, it's about collaboration, it's about creativity, to, to be part of the healing, to be part of the, the, the acupuncture for the planet. So anybody's welcome, contact us, go through the website, give us a call, the numbers are available all the time. So we're back with them. Now, so we were talking at the end of the last segment about to have the experience that of the moment to be here now and then everything opens up would you that's right is that the way so you'd say that's what we are saying so right. for example i'm looking at you in your eyes you're looking at my eyes our souls have become one so i recognize your consciousness you recognize my consciousness when i recognize your consciousness i recognize myself in you you recognize yourself in me that's what oneness is that's the moment that's awareness so if we can really see ourselves in everything we are experiencing, not being the experience, but seeing ourselves part of it, then the world is going to change. And see, that's what, what real meditation is, being in the moment, just seeing everything as beautiful, blissful existence. Because it is. There are no bad and good things. Everything is as it is. Beautiful as it is, it's you. You see, someone asked me, who are you, Ivan? We were a long time ago. You know, I'm not my body. I'm not my mind. I'm not my emotions. I'm not my soul. I am not. Only consciousness is. And that's the definition of God. Consciousness is God. God is love. Love is truth. Truth is awareness. Awareness is meditation. You are in it or you are not it. So, you know, I think that, that that message or that experience has been talked about through all the teachers and all masters throughout history in a way to be here now, to the Father That's and right. I are one. Okay, so somehow throughout history, humans have, have not gotten the full message or the full experience of that. Now, how would you suggest at this point, at this moment, millions of people are going to be watching this, how can they come into this? How can they leave the habit patterns, the, the concepts, the past, the future, and live in the moment, and the next moment, and the next moment, and the next moment, and bring that awareness into every moment of their lives from this breath forward? Simple. Ask yourself the question, who am I? Really, who am I? And you will come to layers and layers of attachments, definitions of who you are, perceptions of who you are. But always bring that observer, bring that witness there, and really see it as illusion. Because you can't really define the consciousness. We are all trying to do that. There you can't define now. Either you are being it, or you are defining it. Once you, you know, if you define the moment, then you are not the moment. It's just definition is there. That's the mind, that's the thought. So you need to go beyond. You need to go beyond and ask the question, existential question, who am I? And once you peel the onion layers, you know, I'm not my job, I'm not my title, I'm not my name, I'm not this, I'm not that, you will come to peace and tranquility. The only, the only issue I have with that is that those questions have been asked for thousands yeah, of years. But so no one is well, listening. I know, no, no, no. So, okay, so on this show, we have the opportunity to, let's use the phrase, make people listen. But, but it's nothing we're saying here is changing the fact that that's been said before. So we have the opportunity now to reach millions of people. How can that energy of what you're saying, that 
energy of this moment go into people's recognition, into their realization, into their enlivenment, and drive them into the next moment and the next moment. And we're using words, and the words don't exactly fit. But, but how can we ask the question, better, stronger, faster, more? Because that question has been asked before, and the reality is that humans have not come to the answer. Mm. So, so we have an I opportunity know. now. I know, but this is a difficult task. I mean, you're asking me in a couple of minutes to describe something which no, is asking, undescribable. No, I'm not I mean. asking. No, you've described it. People I mean, but that. to give the tool that people can get it. Well, if it's know. simple, give it. There is a simple tool. That's what I was hoping to get. Go. Feel more, think less. So move the energy from your head, from your thoughts, from your expectations, from your desires and goals into more feeling. What's the feeling? There's only one feeling. What's that one feeling? It's being alive. That's what love is, being alive. So either you are alive or not. People are not alive. They don't want to live. They see life as finite entity from the birth to the death. That's where anxiety is. That's where stress is. And the mind is very finite entity. See yourself as infinite. Move to your feelings. No, but it's, but it's, it's, how do you experience yourself? As but I cannot really guide you. You experience it yourself. It's your life. It's your reality. It's, it's your God well, within we yourself. We have the opportunity now because people don't know how to do it. I know, but there is nothing to do it. You see, when you start doing it, there's nothing to do it. When you start doing it, who is doing? The doer is doing. The mind is always doing, in going lot, beyond. In a lot of these things, there's a process. But there's, yeah, there is a process if you believe there is a process. But there is no need to believe in the process. You can access the portal right now. You just give up. Give up on the seeking. Give up searching. Give up, give up requiring. Give up journeying. Just give up. On your expectations, well, then, no, no, Absolutely, that's 100% accurate. The, the, the issue is that it's not that easy to produce. No, it's because not. Because there's tremendous momentum. So what I'm saying is I, I think that we have a real opportunity. Now, maybe we haven't cut to it yet. Maybe mm. we, you know, the chase is still there and we have to cut to the chase. Mm. But there is some way. Because in my experience, Krishnamurti had it extraordinary experience. He was an extraordinary teacher in a way. That's but right. But he couldn't make people have the experience no. he had. So he, he talked and talked and talked, and it really didn't help. No, because no one was listening. You know, no, you no, need to listen. Listened. No, 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 listen people to me. People were trying no, to listen. No, they are not listening. They but tried they, to They listen. tried to listen. Who is trying? The mind is I, trying. I understand that separation. The heart is vulnerable. Okay. It's listening. How can we drop into the heart? Okay. How, to, how can we drop to the heart? As a human being watching this Accept show. Accept everything that you like and dislike about your reality. Say that Accept again? everything that you like or dislike in your reality. Everything you are in the moment, whether you hate someone, whether you love someone, whether you are disappointed about something, whether you are in conflict or in expectations or desires or hopes, give up, then you will start sinking in your heart because heart knows everything. Even heart is not against the mind, but mind is against the heart. So it is really difficult to get rid of the mind because you can't do it. Right. Because when you try to do it, then the mind is trying and fooling you, trying to get rid of itself. So right. it's saying, oh, we it's are great spiritual leaders here. Right. We have great spiritual experience, but that's not real. It's illusion. You are trapped within the mind, and mind is using you. Right. So feeling more of aliveness. So I ask people to really examine who they are. And the second thing is when they start examining in the middle of examination, in the middle of seeking for the answer, they have to realize, they have to ask themselves also, am I alive really? Because you, you have, yeah, I see that with my clients. You know, 99.99% of all people suffering from all kinds of diseases in a way, subconsciously, they don't want to live. And those who really got it and want to live, and they realize their aliveness, and they heal themselves. So in a way, we are punishing someone. We are going through the finite you know, experience in order to gain something, to understand th something, to influence our surrounding, influence some people, or create some situations which will trigger certain processes in our consensus reality. You know, the truth is very, very simple. 
You know, either you are alive or not. If you are alive, then you are being. And being is the highest, highest possible thing in entire existence. God is being. You are being. So there is no difference between you and God. It's just one being. That's what oneness is, the wholeness, the holy. You are holy as you are. So move the energy from your head, from the thinking process into your heart. Because the feeling is much closer to being than the thought. Thought is always on the circumstances outside. Meaning, take the responsibility for your own choices, for your own actions, for your own deeds, for everything you are and everything you are not. Accept everything that is. You can only accept that within your heart. Meaning, breathe all the misery. Br breathe in all the, all the disappointments. Breathe in all the negativities, unconsciousness. Breathe in your heart, knowing that the heart will transform that into compassion. What's the compassion? Compassion is the essence of love. Love is a field. Compassion is the essence as well. So love is the essence. Compassion is the essence. But the delight is what you share with others. You share the delight for being alive. Because you are, for God's sake, infinitely. Without you, the entire universe will collapse. Without you, these things will not exist at all. It will be nonsense, meaningless. Without you, existence will be meaningless. And God is saying to you, my love, I, my son, I love you infinitely. And out of my love, I'm giving you freedom to create your disease or your health. To be in separation or to be in connection. What you choose, it's up to you. Either you can be in your head or you can be in your heart. It's your call. It's your choice. So it's a very simple message because truth is very simple. A lie is very complicated. Thoughts are very complicated. Always, always buzzing from things to things, while heart is always there in nothing, realizing its own existence, loving itself, and sharing the delight for loving itself. That's what God is. And I love you. It's not a word. It's energy. It's not I'm sending that energy to you. It's you I recognize as me. And can you recognize you in me? I'm asking you. Can you, what? can you recognize you in me? Yes. Then I love you and you love me. So we are the one. <laughs> you know, I, I I still have just a, you know a slight. <laughs> you feeling. have that buzzing fly well, no, in your head. I, no, <laughs> no, really, it's. I think we have an opportunity. Okay. But opportunity is all with is with, with us. All I know. But we have opportunity to really disconnect from the illusion any moment in our life, any moment. But some people are choosing to be stuck in their perception of self, in their definition of self, in their suffering yeah. or disease they or whatever. They just haven't reached a point where, where they know the difference. Yeah, but that's why I'm talking about it. You know, I'm trying my best to really talk about something which cannot be taught. I'm trying to describe undescribable. Wholeness is the mystery. You cannot demystify the mystery. You can only be the mystery. You can only dissolve in it. You cannot solve it. The mind is trying to solve and try to find a pattern that you can sing in a moment. But the mind is just non-existence. No, it's too small a tool. It's just a small tool. It is a useful tool. I'm not against it. It's a beautiful instrument. Thank you very much for the instrument. It's an open flute. It's like a hollow bamboo where consciousness flows through it. But at the moment, it's clogged with the thoughts. And when it's clogged with the thoughts, there's no connection with the wholeness. And then the energy is trapped there, thinking and repeating thinking all the time. And because it's unknown, empty, doesn't contain the essence, there's no consciousness because the, the thoughts are blocking the entrance for consciousness to go in. So it becomes conscious mind and it goes into attachments to the past and goes projecting into the future. So the whole point is dissolve the thoughts that the flute becomes open, that the God can sing the beautiful songs of infinite through it. Remove the clouds, the sky will be there infinite. That's who you are.
You know, I, I, okay, well, let me ask you this. If, if that's so true, and that is so clear to human beings and has been said by so many powerful people over so many generations and hundreds of years, what about the momentum of something, call it mind, call it thoughts, call it, has created a situation where not that many people have come into that reality? Okay, a long time ago, they were Buddha. And thousands of years passed, and maybe hundreds, and someone will pop in like a popcorn here and there around the world, realizing I'm the one. Or not realizing anything with the mind, they're just knowing and existing their life in unknown parts of the world, not being famous as Buddha or Jesus. But the reality at the moment is, because we talk a lot, we talk, no one is listening. And I'm repeating, and others are repeating, trying from all kinds of corner, because no one was listening. So I'm knocking on the door. Other people are knocking on the door saying, anyone there? And I say, hello, can you hear me? I'm here, you are here, wake up. It's a time, right now. So we build the momentum, and you can realize, and you can see it, you can experience it globally. Lots of people are awakening to the truth that this reality is just bloody illusion. It does not exist. It is beautiful as it is, but the attachment is the illusion. That's what it is. Then people are taking power back to their heart and they start to feel more instead of giving the thoughts and expectations and responsibilities to other authority figures, society in general, other people. People are becoming more relaxed who they are. They're connecting to the infinite oneness, and you talk about that in your shows. And thank you very much, because, for, because you are dedicated to it. I'm dedicated to it, and we are trying our best. You've been teaching for years and years. People are not getting it, but at the moment but they are I getting it. It's I, momentum no, you're is right. there. The, it's changing. It is changing. <laughs> I, I think it's the end of this particular show as well. So. <laughs> really, the opportunity is there. You heard it. You heard it again and again and again. If you want any information, Alan, 805-687-2053. 805-687-2053. We love you. Good night. <laughs>